I, uh, when I started the YouTube channel, I was planning to make a cabin bag prep video. Uh, kind of right away, it was one of the things that I thought would be really cool to show. I know they're out there, there's a lot of them out there. Um, but just give you an idea of what I take with me when I start check cattle. I had planned to do this video a couple weeks ago and I um, did not get it done for whatever reason. And so I have a cow that's getting really close and I'm gonna want to start carrying around this bag with me um, when I'm checking cattle. So I thought what better way to put it together is um, with a YouTube video. So I'm gonna do that, build the bag as we go along, tell you about what I'm gonna be carrying with you, with me when I'm doing this. Um, one thing that I will call out is this is my calving bag for checking cattle and taking care of calves that are born already or in the process of being born that do not need assistance, do not need extra help. So we um, have two sites with our cattle that are very close to uh, calving pens and facilities where I don't need to carry around uh, chains, straps, um, anything of that nature. So if I have a cow that I need to give assistance to, I will be able to get her in the location, um, call up my help, which is usually my mom, and um, she can bring out the uh, chains, the gloves, everything else. Uh, we have a calf puller at both sites, so um, that's all ready to go. And I'll show you that as we go through calving season, um, what's all in my calving assistance bag, so, or psst, kit, I should say. But for now, um, when I'm checking cows that are calving, I'm checking um, morning, afternoon, uh, evening, in between, and I'm actually walking the cattle. Um, we have nice uh, small yards where I'm able to uh, walk and check the cattle um, just on foot. Uh, it gets me exercise too, and it gets the cattle used to me being around them, which has actually been really nice um, down the road working cattle. Um, those cattle know me, they are familiar with me, and it works out really nice. So I like to have a bag with me um, that I can carry all this stuff in. This is a um, diaper bag uh, I received when I was uh, pregnant with both my boys. I received multiple diaper bags, so we have transitioned them into calving bags for me, um, and it works really nice. So this is nothing fancy. It's got some, it's dirty. Um, I ran it through the, the washing machine, it did not come clean, but uh, serves the purpose. It's going to get much dirtier because it's going to get thrown on the ground, um, most likely in a mud hole or a cow pie. But it's got lots of pockets inside so I can store it stuff. It's got a big area most of the time. It's all going to end up inside, so I'm taking the time. The other nice thing is it's got some small pockets on the outside where I can throw garbage into um, and then clean that out later. So. So I'll go through, um, I'll try to keep it as organized as possible of what I'm doing and when I'm doing it as I build the bag. So the first thing that I wanna make sure I have in here is a really good flashlight. I'm checking cattle uh, before six o'clock usually or right around six o'clock. Um, it's starting to get light around here now, but we're gonna hit daylight savings time and it's gonna get dark on me again. So I like to have a really good flashlight, make sure I keep it charged. Uh, this one is USB charged, so I can plug it in my car if I need to, um, but always making sure I have it charged. So it doesn't really go in the bag, but it's near my bag. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing I'll have, um, and I don't have it with me right now, and I won't put it in the bag, but is my phone. Um, because when I find a cow that's gonna cat or that has a calf, I'm gonna look up who that cow is to find out who that cow was bred to, so who that calf is out of. Um, so that's me the first thing I'm gonna do um, so I have my phone <laughs> um, second thing is I'm going to get a tag ready and so we have a couple different kinds of tags um, we use Z tags um, which I found they're a one-piece tag they go in they have um, a piercing piece on the back so uh, I'll show you how to do it. this is the tagger so uh, you put it in to the hole like this, and I'll show you when I do this on a calf. Bend it back and then move it back forward. This has a, um, a sharp piece on the end that pierces the ear, and then I just squeeze and go, and it comes right out like that. So I'm gonna get myself a tag. We have two different kinds of tags. We have yellow pre-printed tags. These are, uh, the majority of our calves are going to get these yellow pre-printed tags. Um, I do also have blank orange and blank blue tags. Um, 
we uh, have ownership, uh, different ownership on our farm. So yellow is the main cow herd, orange is my sister Audra's cows, and blue would be the cows that I own. Um, and that goes back to um, my sister and I's days uh, showing cattle in 4-H uh, through the American Herford Association um, and the Junior Association. Uh, we have our own cattle, uh, we keep those separate. So I'm gonna throw my tags in the bag and I usually put them kind of right in the middle. Right in the middle. Um, I'm gonna throw my tagger in the mesh over here and then also make sure when you're using tags, you use the marker that is designated for that specific tag. For some reason, if I used a Y tag marker, it would not work on the Z tag markers. So branding, whatever else. I'm gonna put that in the same little bucket. Um, so I'm gonna get the tag ready. I will write on the top of the tag in that neck area who the sire is and who the dam is. That's a nice way for me to get a visual when I see that calf, I know who she belongs to, he or she belongs to, and I know who she's who he or she is out of. So um, the next thing I'm gonna get ready is uh, my calf book. So this is where I'm going to write down um, in a calf book who the calf, the number is, the cow ID, the sire ID, if it's a heifer or a, a bull, the calf date, I do the weight, and then a calving ease score. And that's just to tell me um, how that calf uh, was born. So if it's no assistance, it's gonna be a one. Uh, if there was difficulty where I had to help and pull, that would be a two. Three is if we use the calf puller. Uh, four is a cesarean section. We don't do a lot of those. Um, and then five is an abnormal presentation. We do get a handful of backwards calves. Uh, we had an upside down calf last year. So, um, and then it goes on to calf born dead, aborted, uh, dam died. We don't get money of those. The, number, the numbers that you're gonna see in my calf book are a one, two or a three maybe, and then a five, which is abnormal presentation. So I'm just documenting that in there. Um, and I has a remarks comment, a remark section too. So, um, but that's what that looks like. Um, so this is the end of our 2020 season. This is gonna be the start of our 2021 season. I'm just gonna document that there. So, so I'm gonna put that in uh, the next pouch over uh, and document that. I have a pen, extra pens, just in case. Um, and then um, we'll talk about weight. So, uh, how I weigh my calves is I use a hoof -a meter and this goes around the coronary band. So uh, on the calf, the hoof right before, right where the hoof ends and that hairline starts, I'm gonna put this around there. And it's either a male in blue, a male in blue, or a female in red. There's different time, a different, um, different sex. And you just slip that through and then that's where you find your hoof so you'd put it around and then we'd read it and this is going to say that I am let's just mark it right there I am I'm 127 pounds and I'll take that so um, so that's what it does this is accurate when you get it pretty close to when they're born so it's not perfect um, but it gets me close to what their their weight is and I'm gonna document that then as well um, so that's the hoof -a meter and I'm going to make that look nice right now. I have two of these. I'm not sure where my second one is. Here's the instructions so that you see that's the picture of where you're supposed to put the hoof -a meter All right, so I'm going to throw that. I'm gonna throw that in where my ear tag goes. Try to keep all my dry stuff on one side, wet stuff on the other side. Um, we'll talk about what I'm gonna give the calf. Uh, there's two things, two things that I'll give the calf orally when they're born. I don't have any with me right now, but this is a, um, cause it needs to be refrigerated, but I will give my calves, it's called calf guard. It is a coronavirus uh, vaccine. Uh, I will mix it, it's mixed, so it's a dry um, vacuum sealed. And then I mix it with a sterile dilutant. Uh, the reason why we do this is that um, if they get sick, it's called scours, and they get diarrhea, and they dehydrate, and they can go downhill. Calves can go downhill really fast. So I give this to them. Other people will give this uh, sort of, it's called a scour guard, same, same thought process. They will give it to the cows. 
uh, before they calve, but that means you have to handle the cows before they calve, uh, about, I think it's six weeks, six to eight weeks before they calve, um, that you give that to them. I prefer to give it to the calf when they're born. So when you see me taking care of a calf, I'm going to give this to them. I'm gonna mix it up and give it to them first because I wanna make sure, if anything else, this is about $5 a dose. No. It's not $5 a dose, it's like $4 a dose. I think something like that. Um, but I'm gonna give this to them first. So I wanna make sure this is the most important thing I get in that calf. So what I do is I purchased a uh, diabetes insulin container. It's got an ice pack in there. And then I put the vaccine right in this plastic box and keep it in there. I keep usually keep two or three doses in there just in case I have a set of twins or I have two cows that calf at the same time. And so I will keep that in there. And then when I'm done checking calves, I will take the vaccine out and throw it in my refrigerator. Keep it, keep it, um, keep it cold. So I'm going to take my ice pack out and put that back in the ice box. But, and so I'm going to put that, I usually just set that on top because that goes in and out, in and out. So I'm just gonna set that on top of my tags for now. The other thing I give my calves at birth is, this is called Power Punch. Um, it is an electrolyte. It is a uh, has a number of different vitamins, has protein in it. It's basically just a kick in the pants for the calves. So I like to give them this. It, it's more of a peace of mind for me. I'm giving them just a little bit of energy right when they're born to kind of kick the, kickstart them and get them going. I don't want to carry around a gallon, so what I do is I put it in a smaller container and I will give, it's one ounce per um, per 100 pounds. So I'm gonna, I have it this syringe marked to right below the electrical tape, that's one ounce. I'm gonna fill that up. Our calves are usually anywhere between 80 to 100 pounds, so I'm just gonna give them one ounce. So. So I'm going to put that over on my wet side and I'm going to put the, the drenching syringe right in there. Uh, the other liquid thing that I have is iodine. And so I will put much like a baby when they're born, I'm going to put iodine on their navel um, to help that navel dry up. The, um, that navel is wet and it is a um, direct path to anything to get inside the calf. So we wanna make sure that dries up, we keep that clean so that we don't run into navel infections, um, which can stem to um, worse issues. So that's the other thing I do. I'll just pour some on the navel, coat it on both sides, that'll help dry it up and also keep stuff from getting on it, getting in, in that way, that pathway. So, um, so that's in there. Um, like to keep a couple towels, nothing fancy. I think these are just car car chamois or whatever. Keep a couple towels in just to dry off my hands. Um, some of this stuff does not smell good, so dry off my hands, call it good. So I'm gonna throw those in there. The other thing I did, and I'll make it quick, is when we're, when I have the cow and the calf taken care of, I'm gonna also take two, um, two checks on the cows. I'm gonna check their body condition score to show me um, how that cow is um, condition-wise. Um, I'm going to try to, my goal is to try to do this maybe once a quarter or three or four times a year, go through the whole herd, do a body condition scoring test. So what I did was um, they have, the American Herpet Association does a really good job of putting this out. Um, this is just a different body condition score. So you can see a one is emaciated, that cow is not doing good. Um, and then these are at nine, eight and nine are extremely fat cows. This is kind of where the range that we want to be is a five or a six, maybe a seven. These, this is where we want to see our cows for body condition score. So I've laminated them. I can keep them in my calf book as reference to go through and look. The other thing that I uh, do for the cow is I do a uh, teat and udder score. So I'm going to look at every cow, find the they have four quarters, find the worst quarter and score them based on how tight their udder is and how big their teats are. Did I do that the right way? I did it right way. Um, and I'm gonna document that. And that is so that when we have a cow down the road and I notice that she has a low udder score, um, it be, might be a reason to remove her from the herd. So I'm going to uh, look at that, do an otter score on each cow, document that. I did this also because it gives me 
references to what they should look like. So this is also from the Hereford Association. And I'm gonna keep those in there so that I have a reference so I can make those scorings right on site while I am checking the cows. So I'm gonna put that in there. And now I have my calf bag. So all set to go. And then I can just carry this around as I check cows and have everything I need to take care of a calf that's born that doesn't need anything more from me.